Nightly Business Report. Good evening. Tonight, State Minister of Finance says that the country will not recover for 15 years if current policies change. Also states that the decisive factor of the next election will be the economy. Port City Colombo to provide positive opportunities for business growth by driving trends in diverse fields. Negative streak continues for the fourth day at the stock market. Change in settlement method to follow. US to issue rules on Chinese connected vehicles, citing concerns about potential information leaks involving US consumers. From Studio 24, here's Sina Mayadune. Good evening and thank you for joining us. State Minister of Finance Shahan Seymour Singha warned that if there is a change in Sri Lanka's current policy trajectory, the economy would not recover for another 15 years. Speaking to reporters yesterday, Seymour Singha said the economy will be the deciding factor at the upcoming elections. He said that the president has stated clearly that the presidential election will held first, followed by the parliamentary elections. The decisive factor for the next election will be the economy, and strengthening the economy and taking the country forward will receive more attention over what one's want to hear. Disingenuous statements will not count at the election, he added. He stated that if there is a change in the policies that the country is currently on, the economy will be collapsed and we won't be able to raise our heads again for another 15 years at least. Both the main opposition, Samagijana Balavege, and the leftist National People's Power have indicated that government led by them would renegotiate Sri Lanka's ongoing agreement with the International Monetary Fund. IMF spokespersons have been vague about the likelihood of amendments to the agreement. Meanwhile, a proposed economic transformation bill is expected to gazette shortly to establish an economic commission, investment zones and international trade office. Sri Lanka's Industrial Development Board has signed an agreement with the Micro, Small and Medium Scale Entrepreneurs Forum to support MSMEs and address their problems. Chairman of the Industrial Development Board, Saranga Alahapiruma, said in a statement that micro, small and medium enterprises have a leading role in entrepreneurial culture in the country. He added that in order to make the concept of building export-oriented manufacturing economy a reality, the Industrial Development Board is launching a planned program for the development of micro, small and medium-scale entrepreneurs who have more space in the entrepreneurial society. Through the bilateral memorandum of understanding, the IDB will support micro, small and medium-scale entrepreneurs by solving their problems, Alahapiruma said. Port City Colombo, a visionary multi-service special economic zone aimed at transforming Sri Lanka into a global investment hub, announced it offers companies diverse opportunities to expand in property development and key sectors, backed by strong investor support mechanisms. With the aim of becoming a world-class hub for corporate relations and the engine of Sri Lanka's future economic development, Port City Colombo will empower large-scale business growth within the South Asian region through a reliable and competitive regulatory environment that enhances the ease of doing businesses. This progressive economically ring fence landscape is projected to reinvent the Sri Lankan economy from one that has been traditionally focused on manufacturing and tourism to a contemporary system that is geared towards the export of services. With strategic drivers including the ability to transact in 16 different foreign currencies, 100% capital and profit reputation, and 100% foreign ownership, Port City Colombo provides favorable conditions for international businesses and to invest setup operations, while fostering the increase of job in creation and attraction of top talent for not just Sri Lanka but also South Asia as a whole. By driving trends in information technology, logistics, commercial services and more, Port City Colombo also aims to stimulate growth in foreign exchange through key business investments which would further contribute to Sri Lanka's economic development. Two cruise ships docked at Hambantota International Port yesterday, highlighting the increase in tourist arrivals and the growing activity at the port. MV Silver Cloud, owned by Silver Sea Cruises, the luxury brand of the Royal Caribbean Group, arrived from Cochin carrying 232 passengers. TUI's main ship 5 arrived from Langkawi with 2,434 passengers. A group of passengers took their customary e-bike tour to explore the sites of Hambantota with the e-bikes organized in line with Hambantota International Port Green Port Initiative. Let's go for a short commercial break. A number of updates from the Colombo Stock Exchange coming right away. This is an Isle Business Report.
Welcome back to the Nile Business Report. The Chief Executive Officer of the Colombo Stock Exchange, Mr. Rajiv Bandaranaike, says that the steps have been taken to revise the T plus 3 method, which has been followed so far for settlement of Colombo Stock Exchange transactions from the 10th of June 2024. In a statement, he said that T plus 3 system will be shortened with effect from 10th of June 2024. The T plus 3 is a settlement of an equity transaction on the third day from the transaction date. According to this new notification, the procedure will be reduced to two market days from the date of transaction. Accordingly, the trades executed on 10th of June 2024 will be settled on the 12th of June 2024. Further, the trades executed on 7th of June 2024 will also be settled on 12th June 2024. This amendment applies to all equity transactions. Marking its fourth consecutive day of losses, the Colombo Stock Exchange closed in the red again. Both the All Share Price Index and the S&P SL20 Index fell, making this week a predominantly negative trading period. For the breakdown, let's go to Sachin Unambua from Capital Alliance Securities. Today, the Colombo Stock Exchange concluded with a decline compared to the previous trading session, ending at 12,259.27 points making a 32-point decrease from the previous session with a turnover of 1.4 billion rupees. The SL20 index also experienced a downward movement of 3 points to end the day at 3,633.80 points. Notable institutional engagement was observed across various sectors with significant turnover in John Kills Holdings PLC, TJ Lanka PLC and Haley's Fabric PLC. The top five gainers for the day were Blue Diamond Jewelry Worldwide PLC non-voting, Satosa Motors PLC, Mala and Phipps Ceylon PLC, Resus Energy PLC, and the Fortress Resorts PLC. The top five losers for the day were Renuka Agrifoods PLC, LVL Energy Fund PLC, Blue Diamonds Jewelry Worldwide PLC voting, Nation Lanka Finance PLC, and the Lanka Ventures PLC. Foreign purchases amounted to 89.5 million rupees, while foreign sales amounted to 184.2 million rupees. Gold prices hovered near a one-month high today as signs of inflation stabilizing in the U.S. increased the likelihood of rate cuts by the Federal Reserve as early as September. Spot gold was little changed at $2,383.86 per ounce after hitting its highest since April 19th earlier in the session. Bullion rose over 1% yesterday. On the other hand, U.S. gold futures slipped 0.3% to $2,388.40. U.S. retail sales were unexpectedly flat last month, while cooling consumer prices and last week's labor market data came as good news to Fed policymakers, waiting to see renewed progress on inflation before reducing rates. Oil prices extended gains from the previous session today on signs of stronger demand in the U.S., where data showed slower inflation than markets expected, bolstering the argument for an interest rate cut that could drive greater consumption. Brent futures rode 32 cents, or 0.4 percent, to $83.07 a barrel, while U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude gained 31 cents, or 0.4 percent, to $78.94. U.S. consumer prices rose less than expected in April in a boost to financial market expectations for a September rate cut by the Federal Reserve, which could temper dollar strength and make oil more affordable for holders of other currencies. Elsewhere, U.S. crude oil, gasoline and distillate inventories fell, reflecting a rise in both refining activity and fuel demand. The Sri Lankan rupee has further depreciated against the US dollar today compared to yesterday, according to the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. The buying rate for the US dollar has risen from 296 rupees and 74 cents to 297 rupees and 31 cents, while the selling rate has climbed from 306 rupees and 42 cents to 307 rupees and 3 cents. Additionally, the rupee has weakened against a basket of foreign currencies. Let's see the latest rates.
moving on to a short commercial break now. This is the Nile Business Report. Welcome back to the Nile Business Report. Fonterra Cooperative Group Limited has announced today a step change in its strategic direction as it commits to deepening its position as a world-leading provider of high-value innovative dairy ingredients. As a part of this, the Coop has announced it is exploring full or partial divestment options for some or all of its global consumer businesses as well as its integrated businesses Fonterra Oceania and Fonterra Sri Lanka. Chairman Peter McBride said this is a significant move for the Coop, which will set it to grow up a long-term value for farmer shareholders and unit holders. He added that they have conducted a strategic review which has reinforced the role of their core businesses. CEO Miles Harrell says the review has also given the Coop confidence in the role it plays with the dairy nutrition value chain, with one of its greatest strengths being the production of world-class, innovative ingredients for customers to take to consumers. <laughs> PhonePay announced that it has enabled UPI payment acceptance in collaboration with LankaPay across Lanka QR merchant points at a grand event held in Colombo. The event was graced by His Excellency Sri Santosh Jha, the High Commissioner of India to Sri Lanka, as the chief guest who highlighted the key role played by fintech connectivity in the overall connectivity between India and Sri Lanka. Addressing the gathering, Dr. Nandalal Virasinghe, Governor of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka, acknowledged the collaboration capacity to unlock new opportunities and enhance competitiveness and the benefits that it would bring to Sri Lanka merchants. The event also saw the presence of several key stakeholders from the Sri Lankan financial landscape, including senior representatives from the banking sectors, payment system providers and representatives from tourism sector and business associates. During the event, PhonePay announced that its app users travelling to Sri Lanka can now make payments using the UPI across Lanka Pay QR merchants nationwide. Users can simply scan Lanka QR code to make secure and quick payments without carrying cash or calculating currency conversions. The account will be debited in Indian rupees, showing the currency exchange rate. These transactions are facilitated by the Unified Payments Interface and Lanka Pay National Payment Network. <laughs> Commercial Bank has announced a strategic partnership with QNE to enhance the capabilities of small and medium enterprises through the Commercial Bank Leap Global Linker platform. This platform is a pioneering initiative in Sri Lanka, spearheaded by the bank itself. It's a cutting-edge ecosystem designed to foster networking opportunities both domestically and internationally. Developed with the backing of the International Finance Corporation, this platform is tailored to digitize enterprises and enhance business operations. Under this collaboration, QNE will play a crucial role in developing go-to-market strategies for SMEs, creating LEAP profiles and e-stores, and enriching the LEAP Global Linker platform with specialized content and digital assets. Interested SMEs should contact the manager at their nearest commercial bank branch for more information and assistance or visit the website directly at commercialbankleap.globallinker.com. Sri Lankan Cargo, the cargo arm of Sri Lankan Airlines, has partnered with Cargo AI, a leader in digital freight solutions, to simplify and enhance its air freight booking and payment processes and bring more transparency and velocity for users than ever. The integration of Sri Lanka's Cargo Air Freight services into Cargo AI's ecosystem gives users access to online booking and instant cross-border payment capabilities while allowing Sri Lankan cargo to increase its reach and support forwarders that we are previously untapped. Cargo Air's integration with Sri Lankan cargo also streamlines payment processes by offering multiple payment methods ranging from local transfers to credit card payments, removing the reliance on cash payments and enhancing security efficiency in the financial transactions. Additionally, Cargo Air's Cargo Wallet platform facilitates the reconciliation process, automating tasks that were previously manual and time-consuming. For freight forwarders, the integration also means that they no longer need to provide a bank guarantee or pay yearly subscriptions. Everything is seamlessly integrated with Cargo Mart, simplifying operations and reducing overhead costs, allowing forwarders to focus on core business operations without the burden of administrative complexities. 
United Motors Lanka PLC announces appointment of Vish Govind Dasami as an independent non-executive director. Currently serving as the Sunshine Holdings PLC Deputy Chairman, Vish Govind Dasami has been instrumental in steering one of Sri Lanka's top 50 listed companies to great heights. His tenure in various top-tier roles, including as an appointed member of the governing board of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka and as the immediate past chairman of the Ceylon Chamber of Commerce, reflects his extensive expertise and deep commitment in advancing Sri Lanka's economic and social landscapes. Moving on to a commercial break, this is an Ali Business Report. Welcome back to the Live Business Report. Asian shares were mostly higher on Thursday after U.S. stocks rallied to records on hopes that inflation is heading back in the right direction. In Asian trading, Tokyo's Nikkei 225 index gained 1.4% to 38,920.26, even after the government reported that the Japanese economy contracted at a 2% annual rate in the January to March quarter. Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index rose 1.5% to 19,355.77. The Shanghai Composite Index edged 0.1% lower to 3,118.40. In Australia, the S&P ASX 200 advanced 1.7% to 7,881.30, while South Korea's Cosby climbed 0.8% to 2,753. Over at Wall Street now, the Dow, S&P 500 and Nasdaq notched record closing highs after a smaller than expected rise in consumer inflation bolstered hopes for interest rate cuts by the Federal Reserve. The benchmark U.S. stock index has notched record closing highs Wednesday as a smaller than expected rise in consumer inflation bolstered hopes for interest rate cuts by the Federal Reserve. The Dow rose nine-tenths of one percent, the S&P 500 added 1.2 percent, and the tech-heavy Nasdaq gained 1.4 percent. Tepid U.S. Consumer Price Index data for April led traders to raise bets that the Fed will cut its policy rate in September and December. Other data released on Wednesday showed U.S. retail sales were unexpectedly flat in April as higher gasoline prices pulled expenditure away from other goods, indicating that consumer spending was losing momentum. Stocks on the move included GameStop, which dropped 19 percent, though it has more than doubled this week, driven by Roaring Kitty, also known as Keith Gill, a central figure behind the 2021 meme stock frenzy, who posted bullish comments on social media platform X. Fellow meme stock AMC Entertainment lost 20%, but remains 80% higher this week. Yesterday, the U.S. government announced its intention to implement regulations on connected vehicles manufactured in China later this year, citing concerns about potential information leaks involving U.S. consumers. The U.S. government announced Wednesday that it plans to impose regulations for connected vehicles made in China later this year due to concerns over information leaks of U.S. consumers. U.S. Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo highlighted the risks of Chinese-made connected cars during Wednesday's hearing at the U.S. Senate Appropriations Subcommittee on Commerce, Justice and Related Agencies. She said the risks are quite significant as connected vehicles have thousands of sensors, thousands of chips, which are controlled by software in China, adding that a lot of data on U.S. drivers will be going to China through the vehicles. She expects Washington to have regulations out by this autumn. Connected vehicles have integrated network hardware on board, which allows Internet access, allowing it to share data with devices both inside and outside the car. Japan's economy has fallen faster than expected in the first quarter as the weak yen continued to batter consumers. This has thrown a fresh challenge to the central bank's push to get interest rates further away from near zero. Japan has become a nation of reluctant spenders, and that spells trouble for the economy. Figures out Thursday showed GDP shrinking 2% over the January to March quarter. 
That was worse than economists expected, and consumer spending is a big part of the problem. Private consumption, which accounts for more than half the economy, fell 0.7%. That was several times worse than forecast, and the fourth straight quarter of decline. Policymakers are now banking on rising wages and income tax cuts to spur demand. One economist told Reuters that such factors were sure to drive gains over the coming months, saying the economy had now bottomed out. But a weak yen is a worry, making imports more expensive and squeezing consumption. A wobbly global economy doesn't help either, with demand for exports uncertain. It all adds up to a dilemma for the Bank of Japan over interest rates. Governor Kazuo Ueda started raising rates in March for the first time since 2007. More hikes had been widely expected, but may now come more slowly if the economy shows further signs of weakness. Europe's largest tour operator, TUI, anticipates a promising summer season despite increased prices. The German company reported that 60% of its summer packages have already been sold, matching the sales levels of last year. TUI sees a bright summer ahead despite higher prices. The German group said 60% of the summer program has been sold so far in line with last year's level. And prices had risen by 4% on average. Like other travel firms, Europe's largest tour operator hopes the warmer months will beat pre-pandemic levels. That's despite economic uncertainty, delays in plane deliveries and rising jet fuel prices. TUI sees positive trends continuing in the second half. Its outlook comes after it reported stronger than forecast results in the usually less busy winter period. Its revenue rose by 16% to a record $3.9 billion in the quarter as cruises and hotels performed well. The company lowered its operating loss in the January to March period to $205 million, better than forecast. Well, that's it from all of us at the Nile Business Report. We'll see you all again tomorrow at the same time with the latest news from across the business world. I'm Sina Maya Dene. Have a good night.